What's going on guys? Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to this channel, we create content like what you're watching right now simply to educate and engage individuals like yourselves on mental health awareness and suicide prevention through pop culture. My name is Captain Nostalgia. I am a writer, podcaster, and the director of our film festival called Horrific Hope. If you guys would like more information uh, about what we do, who we are, podcasts, more movie reviews like this, links to our social medias, Patreon, and more. And most importantly, our mental health resource library. Click the links in the descriptions below. So Row 19 is a horror film that tells the story of Katarina, who is the sole survivor of a plane crash that just kind of shook the nation uh, when it occurred and she was only seven. Fast forward 20 years, she is now a doctor and facing her fear of flying once again. And once in the process of facing that fears, she encounters some supernatural surprises in this horror thriller. Let's talk about it. This movie is only 78 minutes long. And let me tell you, you feel every ounce of those 78 minutes. In a world overrun by two and a half hour epic blockbusters. Thank you, Marvel. And sometimes nearly three hour long events when you're talking about cinema. It is a nice change of pace to have something that is 90 minutes and under. Last year's Candyman and Psycho Gorman were in my top 10 last year. And these were movies that even to this day that I'm still raving about. I love turning people on to Psycho Gorman. And Candyman is probably one of my favorite spiritual successors to any given slasher in the last 40 years. And these movies are right around or under 90 minutes. Deal for A Quiet Place. Quiet Place was one of my favorite films the year that it was released and to this day I would say that it, I regard it as one of the very few horror masterpieces released in the 21st century and it is 90 minutes and under. But not least, who could forget Trick or Treat, another movie that is right around the 85 to 90 minute mark and it's an anthology that sets the bar for every other kind of anthology. It's wonderfully made, it's a fun atmosphere, and all in all, it's a truly, truly great cornerstone for the holiday season when it comes to Halloween. Okay, all of that to say this is that I don't care how long a movie's length is as long as it makes excellent use of its pacing, acting, narrative, story, connections, whatever, as long as it keeps me engaged for the time that it is going to do. That said, Row 19 feels like it probably could have benefited from an additional five to 10 minutes more of the narrative because there are certain portions of the narrative that just feel uh, odd or paced bizarrely. And while the film does wrap all of the storylines that have kind of been interwoven throughout the course of this 70 minute film up fairly nicely, there are a lot of things that just don't really make sense in the grand scheme of the story. And I'm not going to tell you the things that don't make sense because those are obviously spoilers. You can check it out for yourself when it hits Blu-ray and DVD and digital this upcoming Tuesday. But yeah, the, the pacing of this movie is probably the biggest thing that's holding it back from being one of the best movies of this year. The concept that drives this film about a woman facing her fears, I'll talk more about in in our mental health moment, I really absolutely love the mother-daughter bond at the core of this film. I think this this, uh, this woman kind of trying to overcome this very traumatic event and while also running parallel with the events that kind of caused the, tra the, the tragedy in the first place are, is a fascinating story angle. And I think this movie does a lot of really cool, a lot of great things. It's just the pacing and it's timing kind of holds it back sometimes. I said I really do like the, the character journey of Katarina, I think that it had you not had this really traumatic opening, this film kind of would just feel really forgettable. It would just feel like a throwaway. 
And the directors really took the time to really establish her as a character, establish who she is, establish this this plane crash that happened and kind of how it affected the country in which it took place in. And on top of that, also kind of uh, establish how this traumatic event affects her into adulthood and also as a mother. I think that they make a lot of great character development is one of the strongest factors of this movie. Sometimes when I'm reviewing films from an international standpoint, I will steer away from actually saying actors' names. They are in the, the, the notes below. And that's mostly just because I have made a horrendous attempt over the years and just established that I cannot pronounce names to save my life. Going to try on this one because she did such a great job. Before I start this, once again, apologies if somehow the actress that I'm getting ready to pronounce your name comes across this and, uh, again, try my hardest. Svetlana Ivanova. Because I know how to pronounce Svetlana, I'm just going to call her Svetlana for the rest of the duration anytime I bring her up. Svetlana does a wonderful job in this movie. The emotional linchpin that really connects all of the events of this and what they end up doing with the end and the end of this movie connecting it back to the beginning and kind of her through line is just a master class of storytelling. I think Svetlana trying to juggle this this character who is a mother, but also at the same time is trying to be a humanitarian, also try also while facing her own anxiety and grief. All while trying to, you know, do what parents do and calm your kids in these really traumatic uh, events. She does a great job. This is probably one of my favorite international performances I've come across this year. And I think she just truly does a exceptional job. When it comes to the horror of this movie, it is one of the strongest foundations that this film has. They really embrace two notions. First... The less, less is more, and to keep it simple. The designs of the the monsters are really simple, as are a lot of the visions that our protagonist sees throughout the course of this movie. Talk about uh, our Rorschach rating for this movie. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Blu-ray. If you guys are looking to check this movie out, I would recommend checking this out on a digital service rather than actually purchasing it. Or if you guys are like me and you guys like purchasing it, then maybe. Uh, but when you're talking about Blu-ray or DVD special features, this thing is bare bones. This is just the movie. There's no special features. There's no commentaries. There's no featurettes. Uh, the best you'll get is upcoming attractions from WellGo Entertainment. So let's go ahead and run this through our Rorschach rating scale. I'm going to give this movie a 3.5 out of 5. I think this movie does a lot of really smart things, but I think it, it, it wastes its potential and opportunity by running its, by running its uh, duration just a little bit shorter than it probably should be. This movie's first act is very fast paced and the rest of the movie kind of uh, has a more steady pace because of that setup in the first act and how quickly it moves along it definitely hurts the rest of the film moving forward the are great the horror is great the suspense in this is truly exceptional and i think this is honestly one of the better uh films that i've seen come out of international markets as of recently row 19 for yourselves when it hits uh dvd blu-ray and digital from wellgo entertainment this upcoming tuesday May 31st, 2022. If you guys are across seas and happen to have come across this movie, what did you guys think? Let me know, comment below. Let's talk about mental health. If you guys are new to our video, Mental Health Moment is where we take a theme of mental health and we break it down for just a few moments and host to deconstruct the stigma surrounding mental health. So this movie opens up on Katarina's as a seven-year-old and kind of being this uh, sole survivor of this plane crash and kind of really what this plane crash was and, and how it the press coverage that followed it and the film fast forwards 20 years where we see her as an adult. And so on the 20th anniversary of this really traumatic death, she's having an interview with a news anchor and the news anchor just flat out asks, how have you essentially dealt with this traumatic event? 
And she talks about how she became a doctor and in the process also has faced her fears and how she's no longer afraid of flying. And the response, that interaction really got me thinking. And when you're talking specifically about things like depression, anxiety, fear, uh, suicide, it, it, there are a number of different things that you can place into that uh notion hear me out it's about how we respond to those things i know what i'm getting ready to say is two things one easier said than done and two different circumstances for different folks sometimes it's a process but it's all about how we respond i know that there are times where i have quite literally felt overwhelming anxiety and i've felt overwhelming uh, depression. Honest with you, one of the things that really, really got me in planning our most recent venture with Horrific Hope Film Festival, uh, I had actually a mental health breakdown the day before the festival. I actually called my boss and tell him that I was going to be late coming into work because, well, I had to cross my, I had to cross my T's and dot my eyes for this film festival and catch my breath terrified I had so much anxiety and sometimes all we need to do in order to overcome anxiety in the moment is just to take a deep breath breathe and focus and flip our perspective take a look at Katarina in this movie and think that something as traumatic as a plane crash especially as young as seven years old not only would I, in her shoes would I have a fear of flying for the rest of my life I would probably have developed a gore-a-phobic personality to where I would be engulfed into a safe space and just stay there the rest of my life here you have a character that quite literally saw what had to be done chose to study and kind of set herself not only herself free from depression and anxiety of the situation but also at the same time to counsel those who have also gone through similar situations And that's why we make content like this is because everyone that you see and hear on this channel, whether it's myself, our Marvel correspondents, Alan and Josh, or a number of other people that have written for us, or even podcasts, whether, whether it's the anime, uh, Animine crew, or the That's High Praise guys, guys, uh, we've all somehow gone and encountered depression, we've encountered anxiety, we've encountered uh, suicidal thoughts, we've encountered self-harm or addiction. All of this to remind you that you're not alone and that in not being alone, that there are resources out there for you, for the situation that you're currently going through. And this is merely just a challenge or an encouragement to flip your perspective and Focus on the positive because depression has this way of isolating us and making us look and focus on the most negative outcome possible. In reality, all we need to do is, is focus and just breathe. I hope that encouraged someone and I want to encourage you guys too, if you or someone you know is struggling with suicide, addiction, self-harm, or depression, please check out our mental health resource library. We're constantly updating the, that page. And we want you guys to know that you're not alone and that it's okay not to be okay and that hope is out there. Make sure that you guys check out Row 19, one of the hits, Blu-ray, DVD, and digital this upcoming Tuesday, May 31st. Have a good night, guys.